Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you one flipping strategy that I have been using every single year since I started trading CSGO or CS2 skins. This strategy has two parts and it is going to revolve around the Steam Winter Sale. As you can see, I am already in the process of stocking up on some Steam Balance, I already got around 500 and I have some other items that I'm trying to sell to get that Steam Balance. There are plenty of ways to get this Steam Balance effectively, but we're not talking about that today. Today we're gonna talk about how we're going to put it to good use so we can make some profit on the Steam market. As you know, every single year Steam has a winter sale. They also have a summer sale, but the effect is usually stronger during the winter sale. And what happens during winter sales? Correct, lots of games go on huge discounts, therefore people are trying to get Steam Balance as fast as they can so they can get their dream game that just went on a huge discount. Therefore, lots of people that happen to have CS2 skins and need Steam Balance, they're just going to sell their CS2 skins in order to get that balance. Meaning that they're not really gonna try and get the most out of their skin, they're gonna try and sell it as fast as possible. Here's a skin example that lots of people own, therefore it is uh, quite affected by such things as a winter sale. If we look back into the years and try to find where the last winter sale was, it's right about here, December 22, 2022. This is it. The price was around 108, 112 right at that time and it crashed during the sale to 0.98, 0.99, 1 euros. And this, this price right here is the average. It usually fluctuates during the day, as you can see right here, in the last week it fluctuates between 50 cent, 54 cent, so about 10% fluctuation. The average dropped by 10%, but the minimum price is actually even lower. If you're buying with buy orders, you're able to get uh, your skin for about 10% cheaper. So when we see this crash of 10% right here, it is plausible to say that at the bottom of that fluctuation, it could have been about 20% of a crash. You can notice that amongst various skins, but not every single skin crashes. There are plenty of skins that actually didn't really feel much of a crash last year. This one, December 22, it really just dropped about 5%, which is not that significant. If we, if we take the fluctuation in mind, it could have been 10% maybe. So it's not that significant of a crash. But here's the deal. That's why I mentioned that there's two parts to this strategy, right? We are not entirely relying on a crash. This skin, Elite Build, on December 22 last year, barely crashed. But it went up in price regardless, because January, January is a really profitable March for the CS market. And you can notice this throughout the years. This is a really old skin and you can see. This is uh, January last year. It went up quite a bit, 20%, something like that. Then January the year before as well, at least 10, 20%. And we go back again, January, look at that. Land of December, January going up lots again. The year before that, January, look. This is the start of January, it dropped a lot during the winter sale, but then January it went up a lot. We go another year back, January is a really high increase in price. We go another year back, January is a really high increase in price. If we go another year back, January is another 20% increase in price. So I'm not just making this shit up. This is what I've noticed from the CS market. It's not guaranteed that it's gonna happen again, but this is what we can notice from it. I'm not just telling you this from my fantasy. Let's look at another example. This one right here. And I haven't even looked at it. This is the graph for the last month. Let's look at the lifetime. Maybe shrink it down a little bit. And I'm going to look what it was like in the previous January. Okay, we go back. This is April, March, February, January. Okay, start of January, 1442. End of January, 1650. That's, that's more than 10% growth, that's pretty good. Another year before that, January seems to be increasing. About 16 at the end of January, uh, start of January seems to be 15, 30, so not a huge growth. A uh, year before that, January 7th, 18, 23, 43, and the end of December seems to be about 18, 17, so there was much growth to be had there. And you can see that the crash that was caused by the winter sale was much bigger than in the last couple of years. It almost feels like you can tell by the graph where the Januarys are because they've always increased in price. End of December, January is 
the harvest season for CS2 skins. And the other hill right here, again, that's January. So you can see that two completely unrelated skins, this one is from the Gamma 2, this one is from the Chromo 2, two different cases even, two different collections, they have the same fate. And I can continue looking at many skins and I promise it's gonna look exactly the same. There's no point to me showing you many skins over and over, but I can check it off camera and confirm it. And then if you really, really want to, you can just check it yourself. It's available on the Steam Community Marketplace, right? I checked the Asimov, it is exactly the same. I also checked up Neo Noir, it's exactly the same. End of December, start of January is a period of growth. And the exact same thing with this one. I think that pretty much confirms it that yes, January seems to be usually a period of growth. I mean, there is many factors to contribute to that. One is the fact that many people receive Christmas gifts, right? A big chunk of the player base of CS2 is kids and you know kids receive Christmas gifts and usually that's money and they spend it on skins if they play CS2. And another factor is that uh, it's uh, winter holidays, people are able to actually play the game more and why not buy some more skins while they're playing, right? Okay, all of that was for me to just introduce you to why this strategy exists in the first place, right? Okay, but why am I telling you that you should buy these skins on Steam but not on a third-party site? Because over there, skins are usually cheaper. Well, when you take into account that Steam prices are not the same as cash prices, you will realize why. Let me just show you. This is M4MS Leaded Glass on Steam, it's selling for about 1842 and we checked the graph and yes, it's actually selling for that price quite frequently. Uh, it's quite easy to sell it for this price. We might even be able to sell it for 19 because there's only four of them under 19 and they sell multiple times a day. But let's be a little pessimistic and let's say that we can only sell it for 1842. And here's the exact same skin on Skinport priced at 1210. So let's do the math real quick. I'm gonna take this item and sell it on Steam for 1842. After tax on Steam, I'm only gonna get 1617 euros, right? That's after the Steam tax. Uh, which is uh, about 15%. I divided by 115. And then again, we divide by the buy price, which is how much we would spend in cash to buy this skin. And it turns out that we grow from cash to Steam by about 32%. So when somebody says that skins on Steam are more expensive and it's not worth buying them, they really mean that it's not worth depositing to Steam directly with your credit when you can just find a skin like this, you buy it off a website that takes cash, then you take it to Steam, you sell it, and that way you get balance, about 32% more in this case, and that's how you buy skins on Steam efficiently, right? That's one reason why we are buying on Steam, is that we can actually get Steam balance efficiently. Second reason is the crash happens on Steam, mostly, right? The crash is driven by Steam games being on discount, therefore people are gonna be selling their skins quickly on Steam, not anywhere else. People are not gonna be going to Skinport and selling their skins for cheap there, because there's no benefit to that, they don't get to buy their Steam games uh, with the money that they just got on Skinport. So because of that, the crash only really exists in this little vacuum inside Steam. And from what I've noticed, it seems like the crash isn't that big in the recent years. It may only just be a big crash in the first couple of hours of the sale. It's not really displayed here because the average is for the entire day of December 22 when the sale started. But in the hour of the sale when it started, the crash might have been 10-20%. That's what I remember from my memory, that's how I profited last year. So me having this balance, waiting out for the sale to come, looking at the Steam community market and seeing prices crash by about 10, 20, maybe even 30%, I'm buying up these skins for 10, 20, 30% and they always recover in price from that crash because they didn't actually crash anywhere else like third party websites. But then it is also followed by a period of growth, which is end of December, start of January, so I get to benefit from that as well. And to maximize my profits, I'm going to sell these skins on a third party site. Because here, I'm gonna be able to get the most squeeze out of it. And I also get to benefit from the fact that third party sites usually have smaller fees than the Steam Marketplace. Another question you might have is which skins should I be looking for to buy during this period? I would say it varies. Uh, my primary target is play skins. Play skins is just random skins that people use to play. They're cheap and they're not really investments. They're just 
play skins. That's it. I'm going to be watching the market and see how it is developing. And if I see these skins crashing 10-20%, I'm buying. If I don't see a crash, it's going to be hard for me to consider buying them. Since we have so many skins on the Steam Community Marketplace in CS2, there's just gonna be some of them that are going to crash. That might be cases, might be play skins, might be something like agents, I don't know. It's up to you to choose what you want to buy during this period and then just enjoy the profits. Of course, this is not guaranteed. We can't really predict what is going to happen in the future. But considering that we've identified this pattern, it's been happening every single year repeatedly, it's quite safe to assume that this year is not going to be any different. The other thing that makes me quite hopeful is the fact that we have experienced a 30% crash of the entire CS2 market recently, which oftentimes indicates towards the fact that the CS2 market has to recover a little bit. When we look at the overall graph, it looks like we might be at one of the cheapest prices in the recent year. So go figure, maybe this is an indication that this strategy is actually going to go quite well. But yeah, you know, this is just what I am going to be doing during this winter sale. Maybe you like the strategy and you can apply it as well to your flipping and make some profit this way because it doesn't take too long, right? You might have to wait a little bit for the skins to recover once you buy them during the crash, but it shouldn't be more than two, three, four weeks at the most. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video I made about the strategy and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. May Lord Gaben bless you with some stonks. See ya. Bye-bye.